Hi, this is Maggie. Today I'm going to talk about Chiron, the wounded healer. It's an asteroid with an erratic, uh, irregular orbit, and it's named after uh, a centaur in Greek mythology who had uh, had a wound. He couldn't heal it himself. He was a teacher and a healer, but he couldn't heal himself. So it represents our deepest wounding and uh, usually they're from early childhood and the house you have it in will, will represent which area of your life you've been wounded because we're all wounded in some way which area you're wounded in and um, you know how you can turn that into healing how you can heal your own wounds and you know <coughs> it, you can heal others uh, or you can try to be a healer for others or you don't even have to try but first it's like physician heal thyself uh, it starts with ourselves and knowing ourselves and knowing you know which house Chiron in, is in is a very good beginning um, <coughs> so I'm just gonna go through Chiron in the houses um, Chiron in the first house would be the houses of Aries so it would be you know <coughs> possibly if your self-esteem was undermined in some way, you know, because Aries is all about the personality and self-discovery and, you know, if that was somehow, you know, <coughs> somehow trampled, uh, you could overcompensate maybe by withdrawing or being overly aggressive. And so it's just um, putting effort into into expressing your personality, but there may have been some wounding doing that in childhood. So, uh, you know, that, that could be challenging for you. But once you learn to, <coughs> excuse me, to express yourself, because um, you would associate first health with Aries. So um, then you could use your, your expression, you know, of your personality, which of course you're here to learn to do. To, to help others. Um, so Chiron in the second house would be like material assets and what you value. And, um, you know, it could have been, it could have been negligent in your, <laughs> in your childhood. You know, you could have been lack, lacking creature comforts. Um, things could have been very sparse or it could just be things you value. Um, you know, there may have been inappropriate <coughs> or, or lacking, you know, parental affection or physical comforts or, you know, maybe you were born in poverty or because the second house is what you value and it's material assets. So, you know, it's like Maslow scale. <coughs> if you're the Maslow scale is, you know, it's, you know, being safe and having enough to eat, and, you know, your basic needs have to be met before you can, you know, climb the ladder and help up, you know, of success and help others. But your basic needs need to be met, so those may have been lacking somehow in your, in your childhood. So you would work on, on once you learn, <coughs> excuse me, that you have self-worth, you know, you can, you can teach that to others. Chiron in the third house would affect your communication somehow. Somehow your communication was stifled perhaps or, uh, you know, it has to do with parents, <coughs> with, with siblings. Somehow they undermined your self-confidence when it came to communicating or they told you to shut up all the time or they made fun of you. Maybe you had uh, some sort of a speech issue and they it's some kind of deep wounding regarding communication so <coughs> Chiron in the third house would be um, which you've dealt with your own issues um, so your thoughts and words need self-expression so it may be you know ADHD is just thrown around way too much but 
once you learn that you can express yourself very well, then you can um, you can use that to to help others through your self expression. So. Um, Yeah, but at the same time, you, you, you need to express yourself. You can't just stop communicating. You know, that's not how to deal with your karma. You know, you will need to communicate and learn to express yourself in order to heal yourself and to <coughs> to learn to communicate with others and heal, heal others through your communication. So, you know, it could be the voice, um, you know, different things. Or it could be your thought processes, it could be dyslexia, <laughs> many, many things, anything. Um, Gemini, dealing with Mercury in third house. So Chiron in the fourth house would be emotional, emotional comforts, you know, in childhood. That's a real, really core issue. The fourth house is home, cancer. So if you weren't properly nurtured in your childhood, it can you know, it can kind of shatter your personality or your personality may never fully develop and you may have a, a very strong sense of abandonment or just feel like you don't fit in because that's our very first formative formative relationship is in, in the family, you know. So Chiron in the fourth house, um, you know, would give you great empathy, but you would always feel sort of out of, out of place and um, insecure early family home life. So, you know, you would have great empathy, but um, by being different from the rest of the family, or just by being, you know, the black sheep or whatever, um, Learning to come to terms with who, who you are, you know, and, but, but, you know, all our, all of our chirons are difficult placements, so, uh, but the fourth house is your security, just as the second, second house of Taurus affected your security as well, only in a different, different way. It was more creature comforts. This is more in, in the fourth house because it's Cancer's house. It's more emotional nurturing that was probably lacking. Um, giving, <laughs> giving a sense of abandonment or, you know, you're not good enough or just overcoming that, coming to terms with and overcoming our wounds. <coughs> um, so Chiron in the fifth house is, it's Leo's house, you know, Leo likes to shine. So perhaps in childhood you were told that, you know, you, you weren't really allowed to, to, to show off or, you know, your ego maybe was shut down a lot and so uh, learning to express your ego and, um, yeah I mean you could be very very creative but not realize it so you know coming to terms with your creativity and your self-expression because some something in your early childhood just shut down your ego and, and didn't allow you to shine. So once you overcome that, you can shine, you know, even though it's our insecurity and we feel like, you know, we feel like we can't, we still step out and heal by doing it. So you heal by doing. Chiron in the sixth house is your health. Um, you may be preoccupied with health issues or just um, hypochondriac or I don't want to do labels, but uh, yeah, once you, once you deal with your own uh, issues, you know, your own preoccupation with with your health issues, um, then you can you can you can help others to heal. There's all kinds of ways that could manifest. You know, you could spend way too much time on WebMD, you know, and just imagine all these symptoms you have and just, you know, there's just so many different, different, or some childhood illness perhaps or accident has scarred you, and, you know, you need to kind of 
come to terms with and accept and overcome that in order to you know, help, help overcome your own wounding you know, in order to heal others. Uh, because you know the medical profession and the healing arts would be very good for six house Chiron. Very, you know, because it is the healer. Um, and it's associated with medicine and doctors and health and, and anal anal analytical attention to detail because it's ruled by Mercury. And it's the workhouse as well. So, um, yeah, once you overcome, you know, your health issues, you can use that to help others with theirs. With theirs. Chiron in the seventh house is some kind of a wounding in partnerships, relationships, maybe maybe your parents divorced or, um, <coughs> you know, there, there somehow was some kind of maybe abandonment, um, divorce perhaps. Um, Yeah, so it's just, yeah, it, it could create codependence, you know, just uh, codependence and just working through relationship issues. And they may feel very hard for you, but at the same time, to overcome the fear because, you know, maybe your parents split up or had affairs through your whole childhood. And, to overcome that fear and to try to find a balance between you and your partner. And so that would be an issue for you, but you know, you can work at it. And, um, you know, um, just try not to lose yourself and your partner, you know, try to get, which is codependency. That's what that is. Chiron in the eighth house would be emotional wounding through, it's, it's Scorpio's house, so it's the planet of <laughs> the House of Transformation, it's ruled by Pluto. So with Chiron there, um, it would be indicate, you know, emotional wounds through maybe the death of someone. Maybe you gained an inheritance, but you 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 suffered the loss of a loved one, or the birth of somebody. Some someone could uh, change your life somehow because it's transformative. It's ruled by Pluto eighth house and it's joint uh, joint funds joint partnerships um, sometimes air, you know inheritance um, so you could be very very psychic but you need to train those abilities and yeah it could be that you were left an inheritance but you know maybe your mother or your father died and that caused severe emotional wounding maybe some abandonment um, so coming to terms with that, it's no easy thing. Um, yeah, and uh, there could be a recklessness, a certain recklessness, self-destructive side, you know, Scorpio, uh, which needs to be tamed and, and to focus on your psychic abilities and use them for the betterment of others. Chiron in the ninth house would be your uh, strong beliefs and your maybe too much religion as a kid, you know? Maybe it just got crammed down your throat and you just, you know, the, your belief system is totally out of balance now because, because of the belief systems that were thrust upon you. And so, uh, or maybe your, your, your schooling, you know, you had a bad experience in, in school you know, in your education, rather. Um, so once, you know, once you come to terms with your belief system, you know, it doesn't have to be religious, but some kind of a belief system that was perhaps undermined um, in childhood and come to terms with, um, you know, the ninth house is the house of education. It's ruled by Sagittarius and Jupiter is the ruler, so, um, you know, Sagittarians are very, very wise teachers, so coming to terms with that, you know, you could, uh, you could teach or be, be your own wisdom, 
you know, create your own belief system. And because of the wounding that you had from others' belief systems that were, that were, you know, just thrown on you, and um, that you would like to shake off and, you know, create your own. So uh, you could be a wonderful teacher, though, once you come to terms with that. Chiron in the tenth house is feeling maybe feeling inadequate in your career, or like you're not good enough to. Maybe you were ridiculed or criticized as a kid, as a child, as a kid, and um, you know your feelings of self worth in childhood aren't weren't that strong, and so you, <laughs> you're wondering how on earth could I put a career up in the tenth house, you know. Because the tenth house is leadership, career, um, so you would feel very fragile when it came to that. But at the same time, um, at the same time, with Chiron, you, you need to make an effort, no matter what house it's in. You make an, you just step out. It's like stepping out in faith. You just, you just step out and, and do something, and just try to. Ignore the, the, you know, the, the voices inside that are criticizing you, that are <coughs> you wounded child, <coughs> criticizing you because they're just early childhood voices that, you know, are telling you you're, you're not good enough or you can't do this or you know. So that would be Chiron in the tenth house. And once you overcome that, you can, um, you can put something up there, you know, put something in your tenth house or. Use it to, you know, maybe you could be a leader, or maybe you could, you know, do the occupation that you would like to do, but you would still feel unsteady. But at least try, you know, at least try. But first, you would have to come to terms with your Chiron inner wounding that you are good enough and that you can and try, you know. Uh, Chiron in the 11th house is just, <coughs> it's Aquarius's house and Uranus rules Aquarius, so it's just a feeling of being different or unusual or just not feeling comfortable with, because Aquarians just love friends and groups and <coughs> so this would just make you awkward, feel awkward, you know, so, uh, Coming to terms with that, I mean, maybe you don't have to be a public speaker, but you know, there are other ways that you could associate with, learn to associate with groups, or um, maybe revel in your differentness, your uniqueness. I mean, it would be so boring to have everyone be a clone of each other. You know, you don't need to be conventional. You know, <laughs> so um, yeah, so. You may have some special thing to do in this life, but you're not quite sure what it is. And, um, but people need people who are different, you know, we need that. <coughs> so, uh, and for groups, you know, you can just go online. You don't need to be like a public speaker with groups or, and if you don't like crowds, you know, um, there are ways you can comp compensate, you know, you figure them out as you go along, you figure them out what they are. So you would just look up uh, Aquarius or the 11th house to find out how Chiron would, you know, how it would wound you and how you, how to overcome it. Chiron in the 12th house uh, can give extreme psychic and, and empath abilities. Uh, and healing, but it could also make you want to isolate. You could, you could isolate. It's Pisces house, the twelfth house, um, and you know it could it could make you not neurotic, but um, I think that you just pick up so much as an empath that. It's very hard on your nervous system, very hard on your nervous system. So to get your nerves under control, to be able to absorb all this energy from all these other people, 
all these other people, just, you know, being around people because it can just kind of feels like it could suck the life out of you. Um, and that's just being around people. So sure, you're a psychic and an empath and you have healing abilities, but, but you, <clears throat> you need to learn how to take care of yourself to recharge, recharge after being around people. And, you know, if you are doing healing work, um, how to, how to do, um, you know, cleansing and, and the boundaries, I forget what you call it, you know, when you, when you, you're supposed to clear your chakras or, um, like when you open the channel, you need to do something to, to protect it, you know, to protect it so that everyone else's energies um, suck the life out of you. So, because you are truly a psychic sponge and, you know, you just have great abilities to help others, but uh, you really need to, to, it's hard for you to shut it off. So you need that healing time alone. You need to learn to meditate um, and how to, um, gosh, I can't think of the word right now, but, um, oh, they call it cleansing or heal. Like when you open the channel to learn how to close it, you know, to learn how to close it. So like your third eye, you know, you can't just walk around with it open all the time because you just pick up so much anyway, you, you know. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and um, on Chiron, and I hope you can learn about your own inner wounding and how to use it to, to better yourself and to help others. Okay, if you like these videos, please like it, subscribe. All right, thank you.